And they're always doing things like buying 10 cars and, oh. and doing like, you know, Mick Doohan's boat, blah, blah, yeah. all this sort of gear. And he has a little grandson that, you know, he's the same age as my own son, but he's got the latest, all this gear. Oh. But, and, and this isn't talking down at all, but this is how greats are created, you mm. know. I think Lewis Hamilton was a, a similar sort of thing. Like yeah, you, you know, like there's this nothing how these they're kids, not allowed to do. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like not to say not disciplined, third, but, mm. but everything is here. Yeah. What are the kids going to be able to do? There is a 1300cc twin turbo jet ski in the backyard that Sean has no problem putting in the water and thrashing up the Cooma River, you know. And right. And these are just skills that are oh. building this kid's thing. So The faster you go, the slower it gets, you know. And, right. um, and you think of all the, um, all the guys that, so all the, that Sean has seen mm. show up when he was two oh. years old, three years old. Exposure What's Dad doing? Dad's start, doing yeah. these things. Oh. You know, Robbie Bolger, mate, when we raced... Um, 24 hour scooters. He and uh, Matt Mingay won that race, right? By default, allegedly. I'm <laughs> I, I was there. I was I was party to another team that day. Damn. Um, it was funny. It was like a mini bike shop or a scooter shop from Brisbane. I bet they were angry. And um, he he was riding for them, and we were just like the uh, glorified pit crew at the time. I think we may have drunk ourselves sober that day because it was a 24 oh, hour oh, race. Oh, like, oh no. I could feel my we were we were calling people, just going, "You've got to come out and see this stuff. It's crazy. There's all these blokes on these little moped scooters, but they weren't ordinary scooters. Like half the boys had all tweaked them out so that they mm. were pushing what twenty four, twenty five horsepower or something. I thought you were say kilometers an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was horsepower. <laughs> yeah, and um, a couple were flying. You know, too. oh yeah, like <laughs> they'd had some serious money yeah. spent on those. Bolger things. and me, they put a uh, quick change a V eight supercar tank in it. They had actual. They changed entire. They didn't just change brake pads. They changed entire wheels. They modified the whole deal. It was exciting to watch. Oh mate, like I, I still think to this day. Like I think if you go back on my Facebook photos somewhere, you'll find photos from that day, and oh, I remember it just being funny as. Like, I was cross-eyed. You, you couldn't take anybody seriously. I think um, Scott Gregory was getting around in his beaver suit and stuff, and. All right. Look like um some sort of bad uh, fucking. Uh, it was like uh, can't can't even think of a bad character. But yeah, it was all uh you know beaver suit Las Vegas style cap and yeah racing yeah. A, a moped at a twenty four yeah. hour race. You know, but it um, was all right until dawn. And yeah, then I, and I did a shift and I was like, like you said, like drank yourself sober. Yeah. Like everyone had like a hundred coffees. <laughs> so you know, yeah. I remember at five in the morning going. I feel like I've walked out of a nightclub. I've been riding a scooter for 12 hours and they just put me back on it. I was looking down, you know, when you're so wasted or something that you're looking down at your arms and you're going, mm. I'm out of my body. I'm Sleep looking at deprivation. Yeah, I'm looking at someone else's arms. And I, could, I was just watching the move going around for like a. It was the most dangerous, craziest thing. Yeah, well, remember, yeah. <laughs> there was a bloke that hit a tree that day. Yeah. And that moped exploded into a million bits all, is all I remember. Yeah. I can't remember if it did or not. I just remember thinking, oh, that's got to be it over, right. you know. Like, we're going to call it off here. But no, I might put it back together. And away he went and completed his world record challenge or whatever. But, right. Yeah, Bolger so and then, Bingo definitely took it very seriously that day. Yeah. And I so don't going know back how to they you, won. Going back to you, right. So I know yeah. your, your family are from a, a, a graphics and sign business, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, and mine, mine is from a – my old man raced, raced cars, but he was more about making money and working mm-hmm. and selling. Like, yep. Yeah. So yep. that, that's where but our sort of skills kind of – Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're great at seeing um, visually what's right and wrong perhaps. Sometimes. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I still to this day say that I'm, I'll be the eternal student, you know, and I, I think if you're not learning – and if you're not learning something new, then you've probably just missed the boat, you know. And, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, like, you know, I never studied graphic design or anything like that, but being around a signwriting shop for 30 years, I know what I like and I know what I don't like, Yeah, you know. But, um, yeah, look, um, my my dad had dips into the motorsport world um, when he was he was running uh, Coates Hire for a while and, and they had a V8 motorsport team back in the day with uh, Alan Grice and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Right. Um, 
I remember watching the V8s going around at Lakeside and stuff like that back when Lakeside was just an all-time place to go, you know. So um, going back up there with Sean for the rally cross and stuff like that, um, yeah, I've, I've got really fond memories of Lakeside and, you know, it's a bit of a shame to see it falling apart the way that it is. But motorsport's an expensive thing, man, in this country especially, you know, and it's just not followed in the numbers that it is in Europe and in America and all that sort of stuff. And I, I don't know why. We've got a high bogan quotient, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and we've got that other end of the car. Yeah, but we just don't have all those people. Mm. You know, it is purely a numbers game, I think. You know, and you know, um, if we've got one, say, sh- you know, Sean who's sort of got everything yeah. and the talent. Yep. In, in the states, you could have there, like a probably, thousand of yeah. them in yeah. in the space of six hours. Yeah, yeah I, I think talent wise and opportunity wise, there's probably say twenty or thirty kids like Sean in Australia at the moment across a number of categories, whether it was go karts or Formula Ford or rally or you know all those sorts of different motorsport categories, whereas, you know, you go to Europe and, yeah, like you say, there's 1,500 kids at a go-kart meet and stuff like that. Yeah, and different countries, different little towns. Yeah, all that sort of thing. And the sponsorship dollars are just massive. Yeah, and if you're racing Lakeside, the next one's QE's and Raceway, which is basically the middle of nowhere with only the same amount of population around there. And then the next one is right down there at Eastern Eastern Creek. So we in in the States, you'd have... Yeah, there'd be 14, five tracks 15. in between that with yeah. all with suppliers. Yep. You know, every town would have this little. You know, every time I went to America with sprint cars, that there'd be, we'd be going to this town. This town does basically is built around this racetrack. You yep. get your everything is there, and that's how Americans actually work. Mm. You, you're their town the orientated. Grows from whatever's in that town. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, we'll see. You know, hopefully we'll end up there um, next season. So. Cool. Could be fun. All right, what else then? We got, tell me about your camera um, stuff. I regret last time. My camera if stuff. If you're doing much, um, much photography and you were working on a film back there, you were out in the, uh, uh, out in the communities, hey? Yeah, I um, haven't done any Indigenous work for a while, um, purely because you know, funding's a hard thing to get a hold of. And um, if you don't write flashy-looking grants and um, you're not greasing the right palms in the right places and it, that whole... Um, Community pie is fairly small at the best of times, and um, yeah, at the moment, you know, I'm I'm still, you know, doing bits and pieces, but yeah, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing solid at the moment, and I hope that changes because it, it's good work, um, and there's plenty of good stories to be told, you know. So, um, yeah, lately the camera's been <laughs> earning its money just with, um, you know, like I said, uh, the the new. Uh, Restaurant clients doing food photography and um, yeah, I've had a couple of special details, you know, like chicks in their cars and stuff that want to feel a little bit special and, okay. you know, uh, want to do a nice photo shoot with their cars and stuff like that. I've done a couple of those. Instagram? Yeah, a little bit. You know, like they're just after nice images shot by someone else okay. of them and their cars and stuff like that. I think that's a little flow on from maybe um, some of my summer nuts work, you know. Um, I still sort of come up with some pretty good magic at those events and, um, you know, that's that's led to other bits and pieces. Um, and, yeah, you know, uh, the, the ability to create good websites and, and online content and stuff kind of leads itself to that sort of platform as well, you know. Um, people want fresh images for their websites and... What do you build your websites around? What's your um, preference? Oh, to be honest, I'm really easy and simple, man. I just use WordPress. Hey, eh? right. it's um, it's one I. It's prefer. just nice and nice and simple to hand over to a customer and go. Look, whether you pay me to do it or you want to do it yourself, there's plenty of how tos on YouTube. There's no secrets. I'm here because you need help. But if you're proficient at a certain time and you feel you can take over. So be it. I've done my job, you know, and I move on to the next client. And, and you know, I've kind of been working with WordPress for, oh, I don't know, a long time now, four or five years, maybe more. Um, and I've no, I know where all the mistakes are and I know where all the back doors are. And, you know, I, um, I try and build things really simple and basic and, and still aesthetically pleasing at the same time. So 
Yeah, it's it's um it's you, always a challenge. Are you feeling the shift though, where everyone's starting to realise that you know uh, um the importance of it's only dawned on me the last six months. Instagram, right? Yep. Just people are so lazy. It's just photos and phone number, <laughs> like yeah. photos and message. Yeah. You know, do I like oh, I'm, even I'm, Facebook? This 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 business we're in above right now. No one's even ringing it. Like it's all Facebook message. Yep. It's all through a networking. You know, yeah. we don't. We our websites just don't even care yeah. about it anymore. You know. Mm. Um. You feeling any of that, or any anyone going just no. update this for me and look? Oh, I tend to pick up customers that have suffered in the hands of others. Um. Devito's is a, a, a prime example of it at the moment. They've probably spent about four or five thousand dollars with their previous the previous people looking after their social media and their online content and stuff, and haven't really got a lot out of them for it. Um, they feel like they've been ripped off. Every time they want to make a change, it costs them hundreds of dollars. Blah blah blah. I work in a little bit of a different approach than that. You know, like I, I'd rather have someone make a commitment for a monthly payment and then, you know, I just take care of what needs to be taken care of in that month, you know, and to the budget they set. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a fairly unique skill set to be able to offer the whole service that I do sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it, it tends to keep me busy yet not stacked with work, you know, so... Um, and that's how I like it. <laughs> you know me, man. I'm, I'm pretty cruisy, and I'd like to stay that way. You know. Oh yeah. Mate. Once it becomes too much of a a workload, then I have to run away to the central desert or something for a month. Right. But uh, um, you know, um, yeah, it is just a part of business that I don't really think of that much. I suppose. Right. Um, it, it's there, and I do it, and. Yeah, I I wouldn't say that I'm finding more people. Like, I think a lot more people are becoming aware of the social medium, but I don't know if they're doing it properly. You know, but if your business is busy and you're making enough money to be happy, then that's successful, really, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and that's how I see it. And it, I think everyone's finding the less time you're spent, like business people, mm. the less time you're spending on websites, like. You know, you should be working. Yeah. You should be, che- what do they say, belly to belly selling. Mm. You should be selling. Give your website work to someone mm. who does it. Don't even try to do it yourself because oh. you'll be wasting time. And knowing that, you'll get addicted. Yeah. Most people get addicted to their phone. Oh, it, like, it you know, comes, I've got to do my yeah. stuff. You know? it, it does come back to that um, thing I said earlier about if you're not learning something new all the time, then you're m- missing the boat. And a lot of people just kind of go, Oh well, well, I do Facebook, you know, and to them that's liking and poking and you know perusing the the dailies and it's not um, forming a story around keywords and associations and and trying to communicate with a group. Yep. It's just doing it because they think they have to to right. get the goal, you know, and um, and thinking of themselves as a brand. Yeah, like on the, on the street we're on the Mad Hueys. Yeah. Okay, the Mad Hughes factory right, is on this street. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, very close, right? What the hell do they do? No one knows, but everyone knows their <laughs> They're brand. They're loose. <laughs> yeah, but, you know. They do thongs, don't they? <laughs> yeah, well, but they've got a massive <laughs> brand. Yeah, but they're... Uh, they're completely different to a normal person oh. who potentially owns a restaurant. We should be yeah. taking photos of our food. I don't know. Yeah. No, but then you've got someone like you who go, no, you want your... You want a, a a brand shot. The food yeah. needs to be the background. It's is so important. Yeah, you know, um, oh, it's a it's a rounded approach, man. You know, you social media is a storytelling medium to me, mate. You know, and the best storytellers are often um, articulate and, and vibing imagery, and you know, it, it works on a multiple platform basis. Do you know what I mean? It's not just Oh yeah, I do Facebook, so therefore I am social media, you know. And um yeah, that that's you know, another thing where guys like um 
Matt Hui's are killing it on their Instagram and their YouTube channel and they're content rich. They're creating it 24-7, you know, the, the guy who uh, does their videos and stuff.